Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Trader Steve is now very close to unlocking our first major quest completion, that being Monkey Madness 2. In the last episode, we unlocked more of the gnome area and completed the Eyes of Glorify. That only leaves us with a couple quests left before we can actually finish Monkey Madness 2, which will unlock a monster that drops our first big ticket item, the Zenite Shard. Okay, we haven't actually looked at our stats in a little while here, but here they are. We're almost 1500 total with a few notable really low level skills, but uh, you know, there's really no point of leveling them up yet. Okay, so it's finally time to tackle the Watchtower quest. This one's actually kind of annoying because it requires access to Gutanov and the surrounding area, which means we're actually going to need a couple of chunks just to complete this quest, even though it's on its own not terribly difficult. So we're going to go ahead and grab our first item here. We're going to get the Onyx Amulet U. Once again, kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Probably one of the few items that are still left under 2 mil, but we'll get that one. We've uh, almost now finally completed the Onyx set, but not useful, you're going in the bank. Uh, so with that new item, we're actually able to unlock the main Gutanoth chunk. Gutanoth doesn't actually have a lot of useful content, I've kind of looked through it. Mostly just a few shops, uh, we will get access to blue dragons, which is you know, not terrible. Unfortunately, though, for the purpose of the quest, this is just the start. All right, there we are, 89 agility after God knows how many laps, but that means we only have three more levels until the big one. Now, from that entire level, we got 5.3 mil in loot, not bad at all. If we add that onto our remaining cash, we're actually nearly at 10 mil again. Luckily for me, these strange old lockpicks have actually gone up quite a bit in value, so that's just a bit of extra money, but Everything kind of adds up here. After selling it, we're up to 9.3 mil, plus we have a couple other random bits and bobs in the bank, so we're probably close to 10 mil. Okay, we're kind of looking for an item to buy here. We landed on the Elven Signet, and nearly a 3 mil item. Something that will be very handy once we uh, get crystal items and unlock <laughs> a Song of the Elves, but that's uh, a ways away still. Okay, so with that, we get to unlock another chunk. Now, we want this one to the south here, the one with the Scavid Cave entrance. Okay, so I had a quick look around that chunk. Not much of anything interesting, unfortunately. So to finish off the quest, we're going to go buy our final item here, the Kirill's Armor Set. We're going to buy it for about 2.2 mil, and that should give us access to all of the areas in Gutanov that we need to finish off this quest. So if we enter these caves here, it should teleport us to the chunk we already have unlocked, right? Yes, we are good. Not gonna lie, probably one of my least favorite quests in the entire game, I don't know why, but... There we go, Watchtower quest is done with a 4 quest points for that, which is quite nice, just bringing up our quest point total higher and higher. We can now teleport to the Watchtower, which is kind of handy for, you know, Nightmare Zone or whatever. And if you look at the Monkey Madness 2 scroll, only one quest left, the Monkey section of Recipe for Disaster. Ah, oh, we're so close now. Now for that, we of course need to finish Monkey Madness 1. Now to finish Monkey Madness 1, we need access to a Patol, which means we're gonna need a fair bit more money, even though we've already spent so much. So we're gonna try to make a little bit of money with the cash we have left. And what we're gonna do is buy more Sinister Keys. We're gonna buy about 200 of them for roughly around four mil. Another solid day of the Sepulchre. We've been here countless, countless hours over the last uh, five months. This is a massive level though, we're finally hitting 90 agility, by far my highest level skill, and one of the slowest in the entire game as well, so we're getting a pretty slow one out of the way. I have a higher agility level in this account than my main account, what am I even doing? Only two more levels though. Okay, more loot from the Sepulchre, I think I sold some of it off, but 5.6 mil from that level. Bring our cash stack up to 8.3 mil. Okay, we finally opened up all of the Sinister Keys. We did it in like two parts though, so I'm not really sure how much money I made there. I'm assuming about 500k. 
But either way, that's brought our cash stack up to 11.4 mil. Um, we're pretty consistently getting back up to green cash stacks. Pretty much a symptom of just having better money makers now, which uh, is definitely required. So at first glance, Ava Toll looks like it is simply just four chunks, which really isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things for an entire quest. But there are a few other things you have to consider. Firstly, Crash Island, that is unavoidable. We are gonna crash there regardless. So that brings it up to five chunks. But unfortunately, there's actually even another one that I didn't even consider. For some reason, when you crash the glider in the Grand Tree quest, that's a different crash site than the one in Monkey Madness 1, which means we're going to need actually a sixth chunk, the one right beside Temporos, which uh, I don't know if there's any way to avoid that. So let's just bite the bullet. Let's start off with another item here, the Tormented Ornament Kit, a 2.6 mil item, one of our cheapest options though currently. And that's just another item added to our trader collection. So it is finally time to start the Monkey Madness questline. Let's get it started. The very first section of the quest requires us to unlock a new chunk. Chunk 11822 and that's really the most I can say about it. We simply are going to crash here. If we look around, we can see that there's a blueberry special, some seaweed. I don't know. I'm sure someone could make something tasty out of that. Luckily, I don't have to figure this out thanks to today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh makes cooking healthy meals honestly just dead simple. Since I'm so bad at cooking, normally there's a lot of stress when it comes to cooking meals, especially if it's for someone else. But with HelloFresh, I can get pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes delivered right to my doorstep. Each HelloFresh meal is designed to be quick and easy, with some of the meals actually being ready in 50 minutes or less, which means I can literally make a healthy meal in between a raid. This makes it a great alternative to ordering expensive takeout food all the time, which is something I'm really guilty of. HelloFresh offers a huge catalog of meals for every meal of the day. Each week they have over 40 different recipes to choose from and over 100 seasonal convenience items. Like right now, look at this burger, looks amazing, or this mushroom parmesan ravioli. Definitely gonna order that next. So I would highly recommend giving HelloFresh a try. Right now they even have a special discount offered to my channel viewers. You simply just have to use the link in my description or go to hellofresh.com and use the code POGFLIPAUG50 for 50% 50 off your first box and free shipping. You can also now just simply scan this QR code on screen with your phone. And thank you once again to HelloFresh for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. Notably, we can now get back to this section of Karamja consistently which I guess means we now have a teleport to Karamja, which isn't terrible. This essentially means we now have access to Jogers, although their bones aren't worth nearly as much as they were last week. And we now have consistent access to the shipyard, which, you know, mostly just a quest location. We're coping here pretty hard, but there was no way around it. Okay, so next up on the docket is going to be the Onyx Ring. Uh, and there's a lot of Onyx items out there, if you consider all the uncut cut variants, all the different jewelry pieces, all the enchanted versions. But there is the Onyx Ring, and we're actually going to do a double feature here. <laughs> we're going to buy the Obsidian Armor set as well, another 2 mil-ish item, and that's all we're going to buy for now. Okay, so we finished up the slide puzzle, and of course we did not pay for it. There's no way in hell I'm paying 200k for that. It's time to unlock Crash Island. Once again, kind of an unavoidable chunk unlock on our way to Apatol. One thing to keep in mind though is this is also a quest requirement for the recipe for disaster quest line. So at least has two uses. Beyond that, we got some snakes and some birds here, which poison you, which is uh, doesn't offer much money making potential. Hey, maybe when they add sailing, this will have more of a use. Okay, it's time to take our first step onto Ape Atoll. We've unlocked the southeastern Ape Atoll chunk, and this one actually has some pretty useful content in it. We have access to our very first set of teak trees, which is actually kind of exciting because forestry is pretty new. Cutting teaks here might be actually a very good way for me to train my woodcutting skill and make some money with forestry at the same time. No idea. 
Haven't even checked if forestry works at this location, but I assume it would. Beyond that, we get access to the Abatol dungeon. Actually, a pretty big unlock. We can now chin there if we wanted. This is by far our best range training spot currently. Although we are on the way to completing Monkey Madness 2, so I don't think I'm going to waste too much money there. And uh, we get access to some sharks, actually. So overall, this chunk, pretty massive. And who knows, this dungeon might offer a few more things as well, but I doubt it. Now, because we have some extra Nightmare Zone points and we've finally unlocked the Monkey Madness 1 dungeon, I think I'm actually going to enchant my Salve Amulet. We already have 800,000 Nightmare Zone points, and by imbuing it, the Salve Amulet effect will actually apply to our range skill, which means we can chin in the Monkey Madness 1 dungeon and gain the bonuses from the Salve Amulet. Now, although most of the money to be made with forestry is kind of diminished because the value of the items have gone down, I think there's still some decent money to be made considering woodcutting historically has barely been profitable. Right now we're just unloading our forestry kit of all our leaves. Now the leaves actually are kind of valuable considering how many you can get. Like look, we have hundreds of these leaves just passively from doing regular forestry woodcutting. And most of the leaves are actually worth nearly 400 each. Like we sold 600 willow leaves for 400 each. Maple leaves are going to sell for a similar amount. Look, that's 200k worth of just willow leaves. Kind of crazy. We're going to put a pin in that for now though. So my range skill has been my lowest combat skill for a while and I kind of did that on purpose. I knew eventually I was going to be unlocking pretty much the best range training method in the game. So there wasn't much of a point of wasting too much time with lower lesser methods. Thankfully chinchampas are really cheap. We're going to just actually go ahead and buy 2000 red chinchampas and that's only going to run us about 1.8 mil so not really bad at all. And we're going to take these to the Monkey Madness 1 tunnel. Right now we have a Robin Hood hat on, our Odium Ward, Devout Boots, our Salve Amulet EI. Kind of got a pretty decent setup thanks to all of these items we had in our Trader tab. So until Monkey Madness 2 came out, this was the best range training method in the game. Very simple. You essentially just stack up these skeletal monkeys which take increased damage from our Salve Amulet. Every time one dies, they drop a bone on the ground and one will respawn from that bone, which means after a while you will have dozens of these monkeys stacked up in the small area, which allows you to get really, really quick range training. Yeah, look at that. Nearly 300k per hour and we've been doing this for about an hour. We're already up to 68 ranged from this, or we're nearing 70 already. But uh, we're pretty much out of chinchampas. That's all I'm going to do for now. It just doesn't make sense to waste too much more money here. I just wanted to try it out because it's a new chunk, exciting new content we have access to. No need to waste more money yet. So what we're actually going to do here is we're going to buy some secateur attachments. We can throw these into our forestry kit and it will double the rate that we get leaves at. And the leaves are worth 400 each, which means we're just going to be banking money with these equipped. I really should have had them on the entire time. So I'm just going to try like an hour of forestry with this new technique. So we're simply going to chop the trees to get some passive leaves which add up a lot. Plus we're going to use our anima bark, spend it on something we can resell, and I just want to see how much money you can make per hour with forestry, even though it's been out for like a month now. Okay, so we've been passively getting our woodcutting up quite a bit. We're actually just about to hit 70 woodcutting just at willow trees. Uh, I considered going to the teaks on Apatol, but you just there's nobody there. So the amount of forestry events you get are so much less and I think the money per hour is just going to be so much lower that I think it's probably better to just take the hit and just continue on at Willows. So we finished up with just over an hour of forestry and I think the best bang for your buck as far as things to claim your anima bark on is actually the secateur blade right now. So we came here with a bunch of willow logs and oak logs and we're just going to go ahead and buy as many secateur blades as we can. Looks like we can get pretty much exactly a hundred. And right now each one of these is going for about 5,800 which means just in an hour we got about 500k in profit just from the secateur blades. Plus we ended up getting 300 willow leaves and a bit of some of the other ones just from the events. So overall we're looking at nearly 600-700k per hour in profit chopping willow trees and that's all thanks to forestry. So on top of that I want to open more sinister keys. We don't have a lot of money to work with but we got another 125 keys which should last us about 20 minutes or so. The idea is we're slowly rebuilding our cash here, trying to take advantage of new content and new chunks. We're just going to insta sell these herbs. We don't really have enough time to wait. We sold them all for 3.8 mil, bought them for 3.3 which means that's 550k profit. Wow that's actually quite impressive. Well I guess we'll go buy more of these keys then. Okay so there's 160 sinister keys open. Hopefully we can uh, replicate a similar result to last time. So we bought them off for 4.2 mil and sold everything for 
4.6. Okay, well, still 450k profit. Okay, we finished up with another hour of willow tree woodcutting. <laughs> And we're gonna go claim a bunch more secular blades. I think we got about another 120-ish, somewhere around there. 127, not bad. So the secular blades are still going for a decent value. We can sell 127 of them for 5,300 each, which is uh, worth about 666,000, not bad. So altogether, another 900K in loot just from forestry. So for Monkey Madness, we 100% obviously have to unlock all of Apatol. To do that, we're going to need three more items. We're going to start off with the Onyx Necklace. I managed to find an item that was actually kind of cheap. It's another Onyx item on the list, but uh, we'll take that. Now because by the time we get there, it's going to be really annoying to go back and forth, we're going to buy all three items that we need before we actually go to Apatol. We're going to claim our offer from the Secular Blades. They all sold off for nearly 600k. We also have some loot from the Hallowed Sepulchre we're going to sell off as well. Just kind of odds and ends from there. Not an entire level, but we need the money now. So after selling all of that off, we're up to nearly 2.5 mil in the inventory. Plus another 4 mil in the bank, which gives us a decent amount of money to find two more reasonably priced items. Okay, we're going to go for the Torture Ornament Kit, a 3 mil item, but that should still leave us enough money, I think, to buy a third and final item for this quest. Okay, so the Thamron Scepter and the Accursed Scepter variants are actually pretty cheap. They've fallen in value since when I uh, made the list. They're only 1.8 mil for these bad boys. Actually a pretty useful item as well. But that's all we need for now. Let's head to Apatol. Okay, so we already had this section unlocked, but we are now going to unlock the southwestern chunk. Now this will give us access to a fairy ring location, which is pretty handy. Some mahogany trees, which is kind of interesting. I'm not really sure how viable those are going to be to chop, but could be an option. Another shark fishing spot, as well as giving us access to the Apatol agility course, which might not use too much, but hey, if we want to get the monkey backpack, this is the place. All right, so there's no turning back now. We have to head into Marum, which means we have to unlock the northeastern chunk right away. If we run just a little bit more north here, the monkey should capture me. Looks like we don't even have to enter that chunk. Nice. And we've now entered Apatol proper. Now, although we have unlocked the main Apatol chunk, we can't use it too much yet because, well, we can't turn into a monkey. All the monkeys will attack us, so it's pretty hostile currently. But eventually we'll get access to some shops, a few training methods, and teleport locations, but nothing too major. Alright, so we've been progressing our way through the quest, and we finally reached the last chunk unlock we need, the northwestern Apatol chunk, which means we have the entire island unlocked, we're free to do as we want here, more or less, and we should be good to finally finish Monkey Madness 1. Okay, this is a really interesting dilemma. So as part of the quest, you have to take the monkey back to the gnome stronghold, but there's one catch. You can't use any teleports to get there, and that's, well, that's how I was planning on getting there. So we don't actually have a connected chunk to walk back here, so is there a way for me to get back here without unlocking? a random chunk to walk back. I'm not sure. I think boats are okay. I'm not sure about a hot air balloon system or canoes or anything like that. So we'll have to check and see if uh, the monkey disappears out of our inventory. Not really sure I'm gonna do this yet. Okay, I got an idea. So what we're gonna do is first take the boat to Remington, which I think should be fine. Okay, we still have the monkey, good. Now from here we're gonna run to Port Sarum and hopefully we can take the boat then to Entrana. Okay, so far so good. Now finally, this is the really the key part here, we're gonna try to take the hot air balloon to the gnome stronghold and that will kind of determine whether this is possible or not. Does the monkey jump out of the air balloon or not? Oh yes, there we go. Okay, that's really nice. We didn't actually have to waste another chunk unlock to get here. We got the monkey, we're good to go. Okay, one thing I totally forgot about is this jungle demon will actually unlock another nightmare zone boss. That is actually really nice. There we go, jungle demon dead, which means we are pretty much done with this quest. Finally, monkey man is one is done with, three quest points, plus a decent amount of combat experience, which we're gonna put, I think, right into ranged. Assuming you can do that, right? No, you can't, damn it. Okay, we'll put it into our combat stats. That actually brought us to 78 attack, which means we can use the dragon enter lands, uh, which is actually pretty nice. Probably won't be buying that for a while, though. Okay, so that is recipe for disaster started. 
Uh, one thing I haven't really actually thought about too much is getting my Barrows gloves. It seems like such an endeavor on a, an account locked in this way. So many chunks are going to be required to unlock the Barrows gloves, but I think if we do it slowly, eventually we will get it because, you know, it's quest locked anyway. We have to do this eventually. Okay, so this is the final thing we have to do for Monkey Madness 2, and one thing I totally forgot about it, it has a cooking requirement of 70, and my cooking skill, very, very low right now. Uh, which means we're gonna have to just go quickly level that up. It's dead simple on the main account though, we can just cook wines, and that will get us incredibly quick XP per hour. Grapes and jugs of water are like dirt cheap as well, so it's not even really consideration. Cost-wise, it only costs us maybe 50k to get level 65 or something. Okay, so there we go, 35 cooking just from salmon, and now we can move on finally to jugs of wine, which will be a hundred times quicker. Okay, so there is 65 cooking, and that's actually all we need because we can go ahead and buy a Mature Chef's Delight from the Grand Exchange, which gives you a plus five boost. The requirement is boostable, so that's pretty much that done with. We can essentially just buy our way out of this. <laughs> Okay, so we got four of them, that should be enough. We're gonna drink our Chef's Delight Matured. Hopefully we'll get it in the first try or two. These things are expensive, so I don't really wanna use the second one if I don't have to. Ah, perfect. We'll cook the rest for good measure, why not? Not gonna lie, this looks exactly like my Abyssal Whip. I'd probably eat it by accident if I, that was possible. So there we go, the monkey section of Recipe for Disaster is done with, which means we finally have all of the requirements for Monkey Madness 2. It took a long time, but we're nearly there. Okay, so it's time to do the quest. From what I can remember, I don't think we're gonna need any more chunks. Maybe one more if I'm forgetting something. But I'm pretty sure the entire quest takes part in Apatol and the Gnome Stronghold, but I haven't done it for a while to be fair. Okay, so we're about to enter Crux Dungeon. Make sure my Grigory doesn't drop in the ground. I've done that three times now and it's terrible. We have to get it back. Now with this, actually we've unlocked now the best range training method in the game chinning on maniacal monkeys that's something that's actually a huge unlock because ranged is kind of bottlenecking me from a few bosses that we're actually really nearby to mainly god wars once we get our ranged up we can do god wars pretty easily our ranged is only level 68 but thanks to this training method we should be able to power level that up really quickly and start bossing which i'm incredibly excited for we can do Saradomen, we can do bandos we could do tons of other bosses i can't remember right now oh my god God, why are these bosses so accurate? Okay, so there's one technique that makes this entire process so much easier. The corner shuffle, I don't know what it's actually called, but if you walk in an L shape around the corner as the monkey is walking towards you, you will just phase past them and save yourself a ton of time. All right, we blew up the platform, good riddance. Okay, so so far so good. No chunks have been required to be unlocked. We're on to the final section as well, and I think we should be okay. Okay, this is an interesting section here. Now, this is actually an instance, which means it kind of looks like we're going into this northern chunk here, but we're not. Uh, why can't we enter this fence? Okay. Hmm. Okay, we're missing the gorilla. But if you look, if we go through this, we're actually in an instance, which means we don't actually have to unlock this chunk. And I think with that, we're actually home free. I mean, we do have to finish off the boss, but I don't think we'll need another chunk for the entirety of the quest. Ah, oh, tragic, tragic, tragic that I can't pick that Elijah Spirit Shield up off the ground. Also Neve, that's sad. Okay, so for this final boss fight, we're actually going to go buy a specific weapon for it because uh, we don't actually have very high combat stats. I think we might actually have to use a little bit of strategy here and not 100% brute force it. We're going to buy the Dark Bow, which actually is very effective at killing Glau, uh, and we're going to buy some Dragon Arrows to go with it. Pretty much the Dark Bow is a long enough range that we can attack Glau from really far away, safe spot them on a little piece of uh, terrain, making the boss fight uh, pretty trivial overall. Oh my god, I think we got it. Yes, there we go. Glau is done, which means Monkey Madness 2 is pretty much done as well. There we go, quest done. We get a whopping four quest points for that, plus 80,000 Slayer experience, 60,000 agility, 50,000 Thieving and Hunter, really, really good. Plus we get some uh, combat experience for finishing the quest as well. That's actually brought us up to 76 Thieving, 61 Hunter. Plus we'll actually go ahead and claim our experience. We're gonna check it into range twice, which will actually bring us perfectly up to 70 ranged as well. So that we are finally ready to get started with some actual high-end PVM. We got Demonic Gorillas unlocked, we got the fastest range training method in the game unlocked as well, which means we have a really good base to work off of to start doing some bossing in the next couple of episodes. 
Anyway guys, thanks for watching as always. Here's where we're leaving off with the stats this week. 1546 total, but uh, that's gonna go up pretty soon. But I'll have to wait till the next episode. See you then. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Alejandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.